everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about an artist whose enigmatic and magical quality of their art really stands out in the history of music and really makes them an icon and that is no less than Nick Drake. Welcome to my channel where I dive into the magical world of songwriting and the creative process. I give you insider tips and tricks on how to enhance your own creative process. And I look at the way that artists bring their ideas, their art to life. And if that's something you're interested in, please hit the like and subscribe to my channel. I unpack some of the biggest secrets behind the artists we love. And so to help you unlock your creativity. I'm going to be showing you a little bit on my guitar. This is the Simon & Patrick Woodland Pro Folk Acoustic Electric really beauty, beauty of a guitar um, and I've changed it to the Dazario uh, nickel bronze acoustic guitar strings and why I've done that is just to enhance the tone of the guitar. The original one sounded a little too bright for me. I wanted to add more warmth to it and just give it that retro warmth. And so right now I've tuned my guitar to a Celtic tuning so that's D, A, D, G, A, F sharp. And even just playing that right now, you can probably tell that I'm about to play a Nick Drake song. Just listen to that. Okay, you can hear that instantly. You can hear that tone. Just playing it here in my room. I feel like I'm playing with Nick Drake right here. You can hear it, you can feel it in the tone. And so that's the first thing that Nick Drake has done is he's changed the tuning, detuning, changed the voicings of his songwriting. And the way that he finger picks and chooses his chords and even tuning is very similar to British folk scene. And something else that he does that is pretty unique is he uses cluster chords and Cluster chords are actually very difficult to play on guitar, so this is something you might realize when you go and try to play a Nick Drake song. That's the first thing you might see is that whew, some of these chords are difficult to play. Now why did he use cluster chords? Standard chords have the three notes of a major or minor chord, but cluster chords have more and it creates a more complex sound, a richer sound. Sometimes it can add a bit of depth or it can even make a happier chord sound a bit more sad, adding that complexity, adding that dissonance. Cluster chords are more often than not used in jazz. So where does detuning come in? Well, to make cluster chords easier, Nick Drake actually used detuning his guitar or changing the voicing, the tuning of his guitar to make cluster chords easier. So this is the first thing you can do to achieve that tone and why it sounds so great and so beautiful. I mean, you, you could try to achieve the same effect without changing the tuning but you probably won't get quite there and the other unique thing that Nick did is he actually sings the extensions of chords so this actually adds to that cluster effect adding more depth and richness to his music in a sense he's actually making cluster chords not just with the instrument but with his singing this adds beautiful harmonies to his music but nick also did something very very well which was that he was able to match the mood of his song lyrics and his singing to the mood of the music very 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 well and this is something that is really really standing out to me when i'm listening to his music it sort of bathes you in this feeling that you can sort of feel what the songwriter was feeling when they wrote it or what their intentional mood was for it this evokes our emotions so so well and his music and lyrics actually reinforced each other which is a really, really, really important part of songwriting. Nick Drake actually also did something quite special, which he creates a floaty effect with his songs. And how he does this is actually 
by not quite singing at the beat you would expect. He actually comes in on beat three. Most songwriters do sing on the first beat, less often on the second, but coming on beat three, it kind of creates this feeling of like, well, it adds space, but you also feel like the singing is on top of the music in a very harmonious way. What's interesting about Nick Drake's music is that as a casual listener, his music actually sounds quite simple. But if we look a little bit closer, there was more complexity and depth to his music because he was using more complex cluster chords and singing in a way that he was extending on those chords. He takes the simplicity and appeal of what makes a song popular for larger audiences and he enriches it with adding those complexities. And so what you get as a result is something that sounds quite simple, but is actually not. And why it sounds so sophisticated in the end result. So in order to make cluster chords easier, you can incorporate open tuning and fretted notes to help make this effect without breaking our hands. I have really short fingers, so cluster chords are kind of hard for me, but you know, there are things you can do. You can, again, detuning your guitar, changing the tuning can help a lot. Incorporating, incorporating open chords helps a lot. And this is a trick I've mentioned in another video about Elliot Smith, is actually if it's difficult for you to play a chord, especially cluster chords, you can play part of it, the part of it that is most important and you can still get away with the same or a similar effect. And again, if you're songwriting and you're wanting to achieve this effect, you can also, again, like Nick Drake, sing the extension of the chord. So you can create that complex cluster chord effect to get that sort of dissonance, to get that tone, that richness, without, you know, hurting your hands or, you know, getting frustrated. This is a little tip for you. I decided to show you Place to Be as my example because we can see quite a few of those tips that I'm giving you in this song. So again, change the tuning to the Celtic tuning. He's using cluster chords, except because of the tuning, it achieves that much easier than trying to do it without detuning. And he's using that special way of coming in. He's using that special way of coming in onto the singing with coming in from the second bar. So that's why it's kind of hard to learn this song. So he's like... When I was young... He comes in there, but he, instead of coming in like... And if you try to sing it on the first bar, it's going to sound weird and off. And when he comes in on the second bar, it adds that kind of like floaty effect. effect and one last thing that Nick Drake does is he uses space he uses open space and this is something I talked about in my video about Andy Schaaf's songwriting process biggest takeaways that I want you to take away from this video is the most important thing is tone tuning it's important that our mood and the music and the lyrics are harmonious and match up to really evoke emotions as well as incorporating a fresh take on chords 
using different tuning, using cluster chords can really create that effect. Really thinking about how our music could evoke emotion, why it's really important to incorporate space into that because we're wanting to make that effect, that floaty effect, that soft, warm feeling, that magical effect. Sometimes less really is more. So I hope that this video helped you to improve some of your tone, your process in songwriting, and just gave you a little bit of insider knowledge into how Nick Drake kind of achieves the magic of his music. I kind of feel dirty exposing some of this because, you know, art is meant to be magical. There's meant to be sort of like, oh, the secret of art, the secret uh, of, um, you know, it's like something that we keep sort of kept hidden, like in a crypt, like, oh no, we can't give this away because anyone could do it. But that's not the point here. I just really enjoy discussing the art of songwriting. And a lot of that is to do with what makes music sound so magical. And I think that having that information is beneficial for all artists. And especially if you're new, it can really help you to get over your fears, get over that sort of hurdle when you feel like, oh, I'll never sound as good as so-and-so. I'll never sound as good as Nick Drake. You know, it just kind of goes to show that it is possible to create art and it is possible to do it in the style that you like. It's just a matter of technique, having some knowledge. Sometimes it's weird tips and tricks that actually create that effect. And, and I highly, highly, highly suggest trying out a different tuning and different voicing tonight on your instrument just to see how it feels experience it and you never know a cool song might actually come out of it at the very least you will have experienced the tone of nick drake <laughs> in your own home and you didn't have to do very much to do it so Again, I'm Deanna Faye, and I love exploring the magic of the creative process, songwriting, and giving you insider tips so you can enhance your creative process. Please hit the like, subscribe, and you can also check out my music on all streaming platforms as well as here on YouTube, or support me on Patreon. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Take care, everyone, and keep creating.